Welcome back. One of the FBI's top agents has been fired. Peter Strzok was one of the top agents on the Russia probe, but was removed when Robert Mueller discovered he had exchanged text messages during the campaign that were critical of then-candidate Donald Trump. The president and his allies have pointed to Strzok's anti-Trump text messages as smoking gun proof of bias and corruption at the FBI. Strzok says his work was never affected, and his lawyers suggested the firing was politically motivated. President Trump issued a celebratory tweet that Peter Strzok was just fired from the FBI finally. The list of bad players in the FBI and DOJ gets longer and longer based on the fact that Strzok was in charge of the witch hunt. Will it be dropped? So how will Strzok respond to all of this? His lawyer, Eitan Goldman, joins me now. Um, thank you so much for being here. We appreciate your time. Why was Peter Strzok fired? Well, thanks for having me. Um, I don't think that you can rationally reach any conclusion other than uh, it was political. Um, Pete, along with several other employees who sent anti-Trump texts, were referred to the Office of Professional Responsibility, or OPR. That's a division within the FBI that is in charge of internally disciplining agents. And um, we had a process, a normal process, where we engaged with OPR and submitted something in writing and went in and orally presented. And they decided that what the appropriate punishment should be is a 60-day suspension, demotion, and signing what's called a last chance letter, which basically is a double secret probation and says that you can be fired if you do anything else wrong. Uh, that decision was overruled by the deputy director of the FBI. Um, it's something that he had the authority to do because it was delegated from the director of the FBI, but it is a uh, vanishingly rare occurrence for things to happen this way. And I think it's difficult to believe, given the steady drumbeat of text demonizing Pete from mm. the president and uh, all the calls on Capitol Hill. Uh, by Republicans for Pete to be fired, that that didn't play a role in the uh, bureau's ultimate when decision. When you say play a role, though, uh, be specific. You're talking about this being politically motivated. Are you charging that the president himself said to somebody at DOJ, I want Peter Strzok out, remove him now? Are you claiming that? Or are you claiming the culture that was created around the president's text and, and say that uh, congressional testimony last month was was so toxic that it or or so influential that it pushed someone at the DOJ or at the FBI uh, to decide to to fire Strzok. Oh, I think both are true. I mean, you already have, uh, I think, a incident where uh, President Trump spoke. To, I think it was Pete Sessions and encouraged him to fire. Uh, to fire Pete Strzok. So are you saying that Donald Trump spoke to Sessions, maybe, and then Sessions relayed that message uh, to the FBI and the FBI fired Strzok on Donald Trump's orders? No, I'm not. I'm saying that Donald Trump, Trump spoke to Sessions and that has been reported before and encouraged him to fire Trump also and his allies in Capitol Hill repeatedly called for Strzok to be fired. So it's not a, a secret backdoor thing. They are publicly demonizing this man and saying he should no longer be an agent. Has the FBI officially explained why Strzok was fired? Well, we got, a, we got a letter. We got a letter on Friday, and it contained the entire packet from the disciplinary process with OPR, which included a 25-page letter setting everything out, included the signed last chance agreement that we executed on, I think it was July 26th. And then there was a one-and-a-half-page letter from Deputy Director Bowditch uh, overruling the OPR decision and you know, just saying that uh, Pete's tax were responsible for uh, bringing the FBI into disrepute, and he concluded that the only appropriate punishment was dismissal. Um, just with, so everyone, with wildly inconsistent with uh, with past precedent in so, terms of. Just so oh, everyone's clear, when you say OPR, it's the Office of uh, Professional Responsibility. And let me ask you something very specifically: Does OPR, in its um, assessment, explicitly say? that Peter Strzok's behavior didn't qualify for dismissal? No, no, not at all. In, in fact, they you know, were very critical of, of Pete's behavior. What they concluded, however, is that on balance, and there's a whole kind of statutory framework of factors that are supposed to be considered called the Douglas factors, given the you know near certainty that, that, that Pete is not going to 
do anything wrong in the future. He's not going to be a recidivist, given uh, his his stellar career and all the contributions he's made, and you know, given the the unanimous uh, high regard that he his work is held in the bureau. That on balance, the the demotion and these are very serious uh, consequences. The demotion and the suspension uh, was the right call and and not dismissal. And then that was overturned uh, by the deputy director. Agent Strzok spoke out forcefully against the idea that those text messages mean that he implicitly had bias, that he wasn't able to put his bias aside and conduct a fair investigation. And we should note that there's no evidence to point out that Peter Strzok made up information uh, that would start the Russia investigation. We should also note um, that there were no leaks about the Russia investigation before the election, which would have certainly um, potentially uh, tipped public opinion about Donald Trump persuaded in one way or another. That being said, um, we have folks on in the Democratic Party, including uh, uh, Representative Swalwell today, who said that, yeah, Strzok deserved to be fired. Those anti-Trump messages are hard to put aside. And you had Frank Figluzzi. Uh, we had him on MSNBC a little bit earlier, the uh, former uh, FBI counterintelligence uh, agent. And he said, listen, the FBI's credibility is all it has. They need that credibility. And what Peter Strzok did took that credibility away. And you can't get that back. Well, I mean, first, I think you are absolutely right that it's important to, to realize that after an exhaustive investigation, uh, there's no invest, there's no, not a scintilla of evidence that any of uh, Pete's political opinions affected his job. And in fact, you can read the IG report who says that Pete was one of the uh, more aggressive uh, people on the uh, Hillary Clinton email investigation. And if he had wanted to somehow impact the election, uh, he could have easily done it and, and did not do it. In terms of, you know, what is the appropriate uh, punishment here? I, Pete has has repeatedly uh, expressed remorse. I don't think that there's any question that he showed poor judgment in sending these tweets. I mean, we have to remember that it was in the context of a kind of bizarre, unprecedented presidential campaign. And, you know, the tweets should, I mean, the, uh, the texts need to be considered in that light. Um, but, you know, Pete signed a last chance agreement and uh, was willing to take a punishment that the Office of Professional Responsibility, who is headed by somebody who has decades of experience and is not known within the FBI as a uh, kind of warm, uh, fuzzy, cuddly person. She's very tough. And this is what she decided was appropriate. So, you know, with all due respect to Congressman Swalwell, uh, the way we decide in this country what punishment is appropriate, whether we're talking about sentencing after a criminal case or whether we're talking about internal administrative uh, discipline, is by looking at past precedent. And this is way out of proportion. Let me ask you one other question. When are we going to hear directly um, from Mr. Strzok? Is he going to speak out publicly in the way that James Comey did? Uh, Pete is uh, considering his options. He is only now finds himself as uh, an ex-FBI agent instead of an FBI agent. And you know, that wasn't something that he uh, wanted or anticipated. So he's just he's mulling things over right now. Aton Goldman, thank you so much for your time. We do appreciate it. Hello, YouTubers. If you're watching this, it means you've checked out our channel, so thank you. Now do me a favor. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there. Click on any of the videos to watch the latest interviews and highlights from MTP Daily and MSNBC. You can get more Beat the Press content every morning in the First Read newsletter. If you're tired of content that you don't know anything about where it came from, you don't have to have that problem with us. NBC News, MSNBC, MTP, and the Meet the Press mindset right here for you on YouTube. Subscribe now.